Hi there. We've got the back off of the Otari um, MX5050 B2, and we've created, we've taken both the sides off so we can access um, to be able to spray all the uh, switches and contacts and things. But we've got a sling, um, just a makeshift sling that attaches to this uh, X frame and comes around under the breadboard here and back around the other side uh, just to hold that sort of in place. Um, there may be an easier way to do this, but I just worry about bending um, some of the fine wires in here. Uh, case in point, um, found this uh, straight away. Uh, this needs to be addressed before anything. Uh, and that is, there's a little electronics board, but this is um, just loose. It's just hanging loose in here uh, all this time. I, I don't know if it's just a manufacturer thing, if somebody's put that in there aftermarket or what that's for. Um, but it seems to have something to do with uh, your counter, counter control. So what's happened is that's been jangling around in there for who knows how long. And over time, this little fine wire here, which I think is a ground, just there, has snapped off. So I found where that needs to be uh, reattached on the board, but we're gonna have to we're gonna have to mount this somewhere. All right, we're back. Um, so what I had to do is because this lead here uh, initially was way too short, I just stripped it back and attached a jumper lead um, going from there onto the ground just there. And uh, so all that looks good. Now uh, there's still the issue that we have to address of all right this this was just dangling and it's still dangling precariously inside of this machine loose for however many years. I don't know why. I really have no idea as to the reasoning for that, but we have to make it a home. Okay, so after a bit of trial and error, we have reattached the uh, ground, which is coming from way back over there. So this green wire, we had to extend it and put a jumper lead uh, that connects to the ground that's on the back. So that's all good. And uh, to prevent this thing from just floating around with no nothing to cling to, we, we put it on these thick, thick wires here and just put a zip tie around there. So at least it's a lot more sturdy now. And um, yeah, I'm not going to conduct anything else. Cool. All right, so now we're ready to um, give the switches a good clean. Okay, so now that we have this guy fixed up, uh, what we need to do is we need to address the speed issue that we're having. And I uh, looked on some forums and people said sometimes this high and low switch uh, becomes a bit gunky over time. There's an actual switch there that you can see. And uh, obviously that's going to need contact spray, uh, deoxid if you have it, but um, that's going to need a little bit of that in there. And we need to toggle that switch to clean, um, clean out that contact. You hit it. Get that switch back into it. Now we need to take something and get in there and just switch back and forth. It's a little screwdriver. I'm doing that with it probably. If I can very careful. Yeah, there we go. I'm getting there. And just switch that around a lot quicker. Just with my finger. Just to work that connection spray in there good. And uh, yeah. I can actually see that copper is pretty dirty, so I would say that no bar taking the actual thing off and just rubbing that. And then just hit it again on the other side while that's on the right hand position. Just make sure we're getting good coverage. Probably want to be overboard with the deoxid. But you gotta remember, you, you don't want to have to get into this machine twice or three times or four times to do this. You want to be as thorough as you possibly can be. Okay, so as you can see here, um, there's an array of switches for your transport controls. And what we're gonna do is right over here, sorry, uh, right in there, and this is where your uh, buttons on the outside contact a little switch on the inside. So we're gonna come in with contact spray and we'll just very carefully hit that one. And just switch away to do this. speed switch and other controls here. So same thing. Just gonna try to get in there. Spray the crap out of it and toggle it. Use our power. We might just get the power one. cleans out quite a bit of crap and gunk. There goes the lights. Now it's back.
Okay, I'm back over line. here. I'm trying to give you a better angle. Let's see what the hell I'm doing. And carefully get in there. There's a porthole there. Let me just douse it. Get it right inside those holes. Okay, so that's pretty much it. Um, everything has been uh, sprayed out with contact spray, lubed, and worked very well. Uh, also, the switch uh, was serviced. Um, I did fix up that ground. They've come off of that little board. Still, which I don't know what that belongs to or what it's for, but I'm pretty sure it's important, so <laughs> I don't think I'll cut it off. This is the underside of the Atari, where only with this tab we have uh, all of our heads here that really are very much in need of a clean. They're also in need of a um, lapping, uh, which is quite a bit more involved than a clean. But uh, for purposes of getting some use out of it before I undertake the actual head lapping. I am going to come in with cotton swab and uh, a bit of the connection spray, contact spray. Put some contact spray directly onto the cotton swab. Saturate it pretty well. Then I'm going to begin just carefully. Try to go along in one direction and um, begin cleaning that off. All that uh, gunk. To turn this cotton swab around. You can see this thing's filthy. And I've recorded something pre the clean, which later on I'm going to give an audio representation of. And uh, we'll see. before and after but that that swab looks pretty clean now so I'm not gonna keep picking on that one now this record head I think this is the record head this was actually uh, serviced in 88 uh, no it wasn't serviced it was replaced so for all intents and purposes that head <laughs> it's not really new but um, it is at the very least I had the assurance it didn't come from 82 which I believe is when this machine was from uh, on, the, on the serial number I could be completely wrong about that but um, again look at the dirt and that's showing up really very much so. And this one, funnily enough, I'm not, you know, I feel a little bit of resistance there, so there might be some wear there. But again, unless you have a microscope or, you know, one of those USB cameras that does very, very much macro uh, videography, then you can't really tell. Um, scratches. So this is the final head here. So I'm going to hit that. And I knew the Q tip are going to very gently go along there. Let me just clean. Let's have a look at the head. Oh, yep. Okay. You probably can't see. Oh, there we go. You can probably see it on the edge of that. But it's got some dirt on it. Okay. And I'm going to get the cap stand to start rolling. I'm just going to put that on there. Even though it's picking up a whole bunch of crap. And I'm going to go ahead and look at all the dirt that's coming off that. I'm going to spray it as we go. Whoa. Whoa, 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 whoa. No, 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 no. No, I don't want you to do that. <laughs> Look at that. Oh, I'm such an idiot. Okay, come off there. <laughs> Probably not the best thing to use. Don't use a fluff ball. <laughs> but we're going to have to use it because that's all we've got. That's all we have to use. Okay. Spray and lubricate that first. I don't think you guys can't even see anything. Right. There we go. Just got to kind of pin it to it carefully. I don't want too much resistance. You don't want to fuck the motor. We do need to try and get all that gunk off of there.